Today is a great day to talk about rotational grazing. Come on. I must admit, every time I come out here and see that the sheep are still within the fencing and have them busted out, I have a great sense of relief. They just came running over here because they heard me walk up with their alfalfa pellets. Make sure the little guy gets them. I reached out to my mentor regarding the alfalfa rations. I really had no idea how much to give them. Never, I've never read that in the permaculture books. She told me out of the five pounds of forage that they're eating a day, that one pound should be the alfalfa. So essentially 20% or a one to five ratio of alfalfa to grass. She also recommended slowly working up to that one pound per day per head just to get them used to eating the pellets. So I think what I'm doing right now is about good. I don't have a scale right now to weigh it, but I'm estimating it was around two, two and a half pounds which is a good starting place I think to work up to that four pounds total a day. So let's talk about rotational grazing. What really drove my initial passion for homesteading and growing our own food and just being surrounded with abundance, that whole concept, so appealing. Uh, what introduced me to all that was the science of permaculture. Permaculture, put simply, is a design science that is guided by ethics and a set of principles. Often permaculture is applied to an agricultural or food growing systems. And often permaculture looks at how nature does things in natural systems, and we adopt that into something called biomimicry. Historically, in the United States up until the 1800s, large portions of the United States were covered with bison. And bison would move in these massive herds through prairie landscapes. As the bison were migrating across the plains, they would obviously stop in places to eat. They would all huddle together in one massive herd to basically tighten their ranks because there were predators, in this case, wolves. So they stay compact in one tight area, strength in numbers. They were depositing all that manure in a concentrated spot, but they were only doing it for a short amount of time, for just hours, maybe even less at a time, and then they would move on to the next spot. This contributed greatly to the awesome topsoil we used to have in the Midwest, the breadbasket. This pattern is also repeated in other continents, such as Africa and the Serengeti. You have the wildebeests and the zebras doing the same exact thing, except their predators were lions and hyenas. We see that pattern repeat itself in nature, where we have herbivores moving from section to section, depositing lots of nutrients in one spot, not overgrazing, just getting what they need, and they go on to the next spot. So how does that apply to the homestead setting? You can see clearly the delineation between where the sheep were and where they haven't been. So this is before, this is what the ground looked like, after the sheep, just for two days. And if you saw yesterday's video, you, you remember how much taller the, and thicker this grass was in here. Look what they've done in just less than 24 hours. So in rotational grazing, we're doing the same exact thing that we see happen in nature, except we don't use predators to mimic that behavior. We use the electric fence. So we rope off the paddock with the electric fence. The paddock size is gonna be determined by your stocking density, how many animals you're, you have in the paddock and how long you wanna keep them there. But we rope them off of the electric fence. The electric fence keeps them huddled together. They don't wanna be near the fence. They stay away from the fence. So they're huddled together in the group just like as if there were a predator out there. And they're only on the grass for a day or two before we're gonna move them. Ideally, you'd wanna move them every day. Right now, uh, I'm not really quite set up for that, so, and I'm, so I'm content with every other day. So what I'm getting is all this nutrient deposit in, in one spot, they're eating the, the forage, and then I'm moving them to the next spot to do the same thing. Now granted, this is a little overgrazed. There wasn't a lot of forage here to begin with, and I would have liked to have moved them a little bit earlier in the day yesterday, so it is a little bit overgrazed, but essentially rotational grazing is gonna prevent overgrazing. Okay, great, we're copying nature, but why? What's the benefit of this? Number one is improved pasture quality. By the animals concentrating their nutrient deposit in a small space for a small amount of time, it goes a long way in improving the organic content of your soil boost your soil fertility. That also leads to increased forage quality. This area where the sheep were yesterday has all that nutrition that's been dropped into the ground, 
Also, the eating of the plant by the ruminant stimulates more plant growth. That plant, as it's growing back, is going to have much more nutrition in the soil to grow back with more vigor and health. And if you do it right, meaning you don't leave them in their paddock for too long, the rotational grazing prevents erosion. Places that don't use rotational grazing practices, you often see a lot of erosion because there's overgrazing, which kills the plants, which reduces the, the roots in the soil to hold the soil together. So rainstorms just will cause all kinds of erosions in those scenarios. Rotational grazing prevents that. This behind me is definitely overgrazed. It's not been overgrazed for so long that there's massive erosion, but a good example. There's basically no grass left. It's just right to the ground. The second benefit of rotational grazing is increased health for the livestock. Not only are they getting better forage, they're also less likely to be introduced to parasites. So the life cycle of the parasite is they live on the blades of grass. The animal, in this case our sheep, will eat the grass, thus ingesting the parasite. And as my mentor likes to say, the parasite meets other parasites, they date, they get married, and then they have baby parasites. And then the animal deposits the parasites back onto the grass. Thus, the cycle continues. The parasite's lifespan is only a few weeks. If we're constantly moving the animals, they deposit say a parasite back on the ground, they're not going to be reintroduced to that parasite because they're moving on to the next paddock and the next paddock and the next paddock. By the time they get back to that first paddock, depending on your setup, the size of your operation and everything, hopefully it's been about six weeks or more before they're getting back to that first paddock and those parasites are gone. They've not been able to procreate because they've not been ingested. Number three, less inputs. Because of the improved pasture quality, the livestock are getting so much more of their nutrition from the grass that you need less hay to supplement them with. Also, you're going to extend your grazing season, thus also reducing your hay input. Another input that is reduced is your medical inter intervention. Because they're less exposed to parasites, they're gonna be healthier animals, thus needing less medical attention. And all of these things combined basically make up the fourth benefit, which is an improved final yield. Because you have an overall healthier animal using the rotational grazing method, you're gonna have a much better end product, whether it's a meat or milk or whatever your product is, it is gonna be significantly better from a healthy animal. With rotational grazing out of the way now, let's go to the beach.